I was desperate to shave my hair. And then George met me and fell in love with it and, and was like, don't do it. I want them back. So I still don't have my license. That was a bit of a problem, but no, it was actually really exciting because it meant that the only things I know how to do in a car are the things that you see on screen. I know no normal driving techniques. I only know how to do stunt work, essentially. But we started training about a year before I came into Australia, and it was motorbikes, cars, being able to physically do the stunts over and over and over again with strength training. And I was really lucky that I had a wonderful stunt double, Haley Wright, who has become my sister, and she and I just did all of our training together. I have it, uh, the, or one of them at least. The, the crew very kindly, um, as a gift and to say goodbye, let me have one of her mechanical arms, which is very extraordinary. I was desperate to shave my hair. I told everybody, I was like, guys, it's gotta go. And then George met me and fell in love with it. And and was like, don't do it. So I'm still waiting to do that. You, you, you know, look at the length of your hair. Now, how long did, did it take to grow that? We shot on this movie where Anya's hair, or the Furiosa's hair was shaved for about a week and a half, two weeks. So I thought Furiosa, it was, it was the, for the whole shoot. And I remember, you know what, I just I remember, Many years ago, I was a young doctor working in a psychiatric ward as part of a rotation in a hospital. And I remember a, a patient came in who was a young woman who was the, the head psychiatrist said, how long have you been here? And she did this. She, her hair was down here. She started to measure the months by her hair. That's how she kept time. Yeah. And the moment you said that, oh, she came back to me. And I thought, mm -hmm. how many months is it going to take you? How many years? He's a very sweet man, Dr. George. But, but, but and, and, and for two weeks. Plus, if we had to suddenly shoot something else, uh, then it would have been difficult because we didn't have the, the ability to do it. So I'm glad we did that. And uh, the wigs worked well, and we were able to sort of make it work really well with visual effects and so on. It was the right decision. Yeah, and actually the mythology of the hair was very important because at the beginning, George and I would have these really long conversations about why she was keeping this hair and as a storytelling device it's important because it shows the passage of time but we also settled on an explanation that I think Furiosa believes for a long time that she will be able to get back to the green place still being the girl that she was when she was stolen and I think her hair is such a representation of the Volvolini for her that when she does lose it in the film you as the audience get a very definitive feeling of there is no going back from this I am a product of the wasteland now and I am forever changed. That's exactly right. It's a long story, but basically, I've been making these films for a long time now. I never thought I'd be still making them, but there's something about them that's very compelling, and I think it's because you could, they're very multi-layered stories. So each one of those vehicles basically reflects what's happening to the character. For instance, Dementus starts off with the chariot, ends up with that big six foot. Furiosa starts off basically on foot and ends up on that war rig, which has got a single tank. When she meets Praetorian Jack, it becomes a double tank. When she decides that she's not going back and is just after Dementus, she basically hijacks that car called the Cranky Black, which basically reflects her rage. So it's all character based. Furiosa! Furiosa! We didn't know there was going to be another film, and so to be on set with these incredible artisans, with these incredible stunt performers, with a world that's so meticulously created, it just felt like being a little kid. It was like, oh wow, this is exactly why I got into acting. This is what I wanted to be doing with my life. Yeah, it's definitely a, a dream come true, uh, being, have, especially as an Australian, to have grown up watching these films watching them with my, my dad, having such wonderful nostalgic memories about that ex the, those times. You know, David Collins said it, he said, the Brits have Harry Potter, the Americans have Star Wars, and we as Australians have Mad Max. So to be a part of a, a piece of iconic cinematic Australian cinema um, is just, just brilliant and a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> The 
the desert was so magical and it's also something as somebody who had never been to Australia before I feel like the red earth of the outback is such a Mad Max staple so I didn't really feel like I was part of the universe until I'd kind of been out there and rolled around in it which actually was something that I did because my character is very dirty so there are times when we just needed a little bit more dirt so I just roll over and but it's absolutely beautiful the stars that you get to see at night um, and I think starting the film there it felt like the right thing to do because where we were actually shooting in Broken Hill was some of the original locations from some of the first Mad Max movies so you could really feel this sense of legacy there and sunscreen it's factor 50 always always yeah the, the landscape and the environment that we shot in um, I mean they're truly they truly are characters within the movie that you interact with and respond to and unlike being in a studio on a green screen when you're out in amongst the elements um, there is a visceral effect that uh, and a truth that you, that you can't replicate he took everything from me. I need a vehicle.